Well, unfortunately, Omar Colley's red card in the quarterfinals of the DFB Pockle single-handedly, I feel like, did get us out of that competition with that loss against Hanover, and it does mean now that our main focus here is on getting promoted up to the Bundesliga, and with that big gap that we did have, having played for just a little bit, we are now on the verge of making our way up to the Bundesliga. Hopefully, that will happen in today's episode. Plus a you, Finte. And welcome to episode 59 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and come up today. We are going to try and get ourselves promoted up to the Bundesliga already with a big gap on top of the table. And we do have a few games in hand, so hopefully can get the job done in today's episode. And as well as that, as you can see on screen, we've got our youth intake as well. So if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but we're starting today's episode having gone back in time a little bit from the first game that we are going to play today and that is because we did get our youth and take through in between the games that we have played in between today and yesterday's episode which if you missed it did include a DFB Pockle quarterfinal against Hanover screw you Omar Colley and also we did take on second place Bochum in the two Bundesliga if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner but here's our youth and take for 2028 here at Lokomotiv Leipzig as you can see it's not that good a one only rated average two and a half stars and only a couple of players really we are probably going to sign from this year's youth and take the four top talents there as you can see on screen so we'll run through these guys quickly before we do get stuck in to a recap of our results since yesterday's episode the top one is brian walshmitt half a star current ability three and a half stars potential looks like a goalkeeper who could be a decent squad player for us in the future hopefully that potential stacks up if we do make our way up to the bundesliga like we are expecting come the end of today's episode but a decent prospect there at 15 years old for us there in goal as well as him we've got falco balak one star current ability with three and a half stars potential he is a right back also 15 years old no standout attributes as far as i can see but some decent potential there so like the goalkeeper could end up being a useful squad player for us in the future if that potential does stack up probably the best player coming through this year's youth intake yet again is a right winger that seems to be a bit of a theme here at Lokomotiv Leipzig this year. It is Carsten Ewald, one star current ability, four star potential, very good aggression. And apart from that, though, the rest of his attributes aren't too hot, but does have the best potential of our crop that we have got in the youth intake this year. So probably is the star pupil is Carsten Ewald. And the other player we're probably going to sign from the youth intake is a striker come midfielder in Fabian Hump, one star current ability, three and a half stars potential like the other two who came earlier in the youth intake, might be someone who could be a decent squad player in the future here. At Lokomotiv Leipzig, that was our youth intake this year. At Lokomotiv Leipzig, obviously not too great. A lot of players who unfortunately aren't going to make the cut here, especially if we do make our way up to the Bundesliga, but for decent players there who hopefully might develop to be squad players. And now we can go forward a few weeks off the back of that to where we are in terms of the on-field actions. Yesterday's episode, there you can see the results that lost to Hanover on penalties off the back of that late red card in regular time and also that draw away at Bochum with a team that was quite heavily impacted by both injury and tiredness off the back of that cup game. Off the back of that, we have played the games in the month of March, obviously, with that being the month where the youth intake does take place and to be fair our results haven't been that bad especially when you consider we have been quite light especially in those wing areas with those injuries that we did pick up in those games yesterday first up a one all draw against Arminia Bielefeld Omar Colley had a big influence in this game he did score the early goal for us from a set piece but unfortunately bad giveaway just shy of half time did allow Arminia Bielefeld to equalize and not much happened in the second half of that game but thankfully still picked up a point albeit that would be the longest period I think we've gone without a win so far this season which is saying something but thankfully we've started to pick up our form just a little bit off the back of that one away from home we took on Magdeburg Danny Lewell came on late in this one as a left wing backup 
for Benicia Baker Barty. Of course, not a bad player, actually quite similar to our usual style there. And Osman Tilgan also being able to play striker and thankfully got a goal in this one with 12 minutes to go. That did mean we picked up all three points and off the back of that, it was the complete opposite. An early goal as we took down Paderborn 1-0 at home. So thankfully, despite those injuries, our form has been pretty good off the back. All but yesterday's episode, we're going to the start of April, right on the verge of gaining promotion up to the Bundesliga. We're 15 points clear of Augsburg and 16 points clear of Fortuna Dusseldorf with seven games left in the season. Obviously, we can't probably seal promotion in this next game we play, but we can get ourselves in a very good position going into our games off the back of our next one. Where we do take on Kalsruri and those guys are mid-table, and with this one being at home, Hopefully, we can get above that 70-point mark, and that should really be enough for us. But off the back of this, we can hopefully make sure with another good result during the course of today's episode. So it's fair to say I think today's one is going to be the episode we do make our way up to the Bundesliga and also hopefully can secure the title at the same time. And we come into this one, obviously, still with a few injury concerns, albeit not as bad as it was during yesterday's episode, some players who have recovered from recent injuries are our backup attacking midfielder in Imhand. Also, Danny Lul has been battling run recently. Thankfully, he is back as well as starters Matteo Coachella as well as our new goalkeeper in Ivisic. He had a flu. Thankfully, Hasman did a decent job in his place for one of those recent games. But still, we are missing Yuri Bass with a broken ankle. He's not that far away though, so could even feature in one of the games of today's episode and also Osman Atilgan might feature for our second game could be back off the back of this Kauru one seeing as he's only got five to ten days left before he recovers from that broken collarbone he suffered in that cup game in yesterday's episode but hopefully as I said this is the game where we can put ourselves right on the brink of getting ourselves promoted up to the Bundesliga taking on a Kauru team as you can see we have a very good record against so far in the save and at home you'd like to think this will be three points, albeit these guys come to this game in some decent form recent wins over Bochum, Armenia, Bielefeld, as well as Magdeburg. Very similar scoreline. In fact, the same scoreline that we bet them by. So it might not be all our own way in this game, but hopefully at home we can pick up another win. And as I said, get ourselves on the verge of promotion to the top tier in German football. And we'll come back shortly and hopefully get ourselves in that position from Bruno Plark Stadion. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. We are at home and in terms of actually your starting 11, not too badly affected by those recent injuries, just Triple B at left wing. But apart from that, it is our usual first choice starting 11. There are Kals Rui also going with a 4 2 3 1. And as you can tell by the table, a win here should put us right on the verge of getting that promotion. And a very early highlight in this one at the three minute mark, we are in position at home in our usual yellow uniforms. And Gal there plays a nice loop ball over the top. For Krasnicki already, looks like we might get a good chance here through our right winger. Unfortunately, though, that shot looking for that top right corner is a bit weak, but an encouraging start. Still low, nil all. And in fact, right off the back of that opening chance to Krasnicki, now it's a free kick here in our favor, just inside of the opposition half. So thankfully, on the front foot, nice and early in this game. Triple B plays that one back to Coachella, gets it back now inside the box from a tight angle, takes on a shot, cutting inside. And unfortunately, that one comes off the woodwork, but an encouraging start. It's still nil all. And off the back of that good start, we have to wait until the half hour mark for our next highlight in this game. Well and truly on the front foot, but Kyle's Rui have had a few chances since you were last here, albeit not shown in highlights. Hopefully that continues. Now Krasnicki tries to square that one for Daniel Cueto. Actually finds him despite the efforts there from that defender, but good work. And yet again, the post saves Kyle Rui and it is still nil all. And just making our way into the last 10 minutes of this first half, still well and truly on the front foot. We have a throw in there, but unfortunately give the ball away a bit softly. But thankfully that clearance falls into the feet of Campanelli and now Kazuri with a chance to do something on the counter-attack. Thankfully good work there from Dorenzo. And now Krasnicki has the ball inside of the box. Starts to cut inside, lays that one off for Campanelli, who will drive that one into the top left corner. Luca Campanelli out right back with only his second goal of the season. And that could be a big one, makes it 1-0 just before halftime. Hopefully that will be a big goal and put us on the verge of promotion up to the Bundesliga. Fort Krasnicki might just take the shot on there himself, but thankfully did lay that one off for our right back and good driving finish there into that top left corner. A good first half and we eventually take a 1-0 lead. 
And there's one more highlight in this first half, albeit down the other end here. It's a corner here for Carl's Reef. Thankfully, Bullock gets his head on the end of that one. And now Krasnicki can get us back in control of the ball. Hopefully, we can play our way out of defense and make our way down the other end to try and grab a cushion goal. Good loop ball there over the top for Quetto. And Krasnicki cutting inside yet again on the ball. Plays that one out for Triple B. Now just inside the box, we'll square that one. Somehow finds its way through to Yakuba Salue, who tucks it away bottom right corner. We are going to have to wait here for a VAR check. Might have been something happening there. Did look like someone should have picked up the ball. Might have been an iffy challenge there, but the goal has been awarded. It's a quick fire double before half time to give us that cushion goal lead that we were looking for. Triple B here. Thought he might play that one backwards, but Krasnicki goes in, all the defenders go to him, and it falls to Salue, who tucks that one away with a bit of help from the underside of the keeper's right arm. As you can see, he is well and truly onside. In fact, everyone there is, and Salue grabs our second goal of the game, and thankfully, we do get some reward eventually for a good first half in this one, and everyone out there playing quite well as well, so I think we're just going to leave things the way they are going into the second half, and also looks like the opposition instructions are pretty solid as well. A good first half, we'll get the second underway with that 2-0 lead. And only a few minutes into the second half, unfortunately, Albin Krasnicki playing well, but has picked up a yellow card. Osha Davida back from the injury he suffered coming on for a Tilgan in that game yesterday. He can come on and get some game time. Still 40 minutes left, and we have a 2-0 lead. And very shortly off the back of that first substitution, it is here us in position. They do want to hear their dues, Carl's Rue, but thankfully Campanelli goes for to get the ball and plays it nicely there through to Davida through on goal, but unfortunately, that's a weak and poorly placed shot for the Carl's Rue goalkeeper to save. Now we have a free kick shortly off the back of that, and Davida yet again is in position. Can't do anything off the free kick, but we give the ball back, and again, a big chance for him here, this time from a ball from Tom Gow. Better effort that one, but unfortunately, comes off the post, and now Carl's Rue look to do something on the counter-attack, but thankfully the highlight stops, albeit now they have a free kick looking for that top left corner. It does challenge Ilizic in goal, but thankfully just over the top, and it is still 2-0 in our favour, and in fact, Matteo Coachella has now picked up a yellow card, so we'll play things safe and take him off for Lewis Warrington, and as well as that, we might take off Dorenzo on a 6.6 .6 or Blainberg for this last half hour, still with that 2-0 lead. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of it, this game will bring some players on here to use up our last couple of substitutions so that they can get some ratings off of the bench. We're going to bring on Danny Lill off the back of that goal that he scored a couple of games ago off of the bench in place of Triple B. And also we'll give Imhand a run in place of Daniel Cueto. Those will be our last subs. Still pretty well in control though. 2-0 with only 15 minutes left. And we just into the last five minutes of this game, keeping a quick eye there on the live table. But unfortunately for Junior Dusseldorf, are not playing on the same match. They would have been time wasting for the last five minutes of this game. And as you can see, that was a pretty quiet second half off the back of us grabbing two goals just before half time. And we'd pick up a pretty comfortable 2 0 win there over Carl's Reef, thanks to those late first half goals to Campanelli and Salue. And that should put us on the verge of getting promoted to the Bundesliga. Hopefully, we can do it in one of our next couple of games, albeit they are tough ones taking on Heidenheim as well as Fortuna Dusseldorf, but that is a good result. As you can see, it does secure us a playoff spot with that gap. We are certainly looking for more, and hopefully can now get promoted up to the Bundesliga and win the two Bundesliga title. And we've gone for about a week off the back of that good 2-0 win over Kalsari. Unfortunately, Fortuna Dusseldorf did pick up a win the following day over Magdeburg, but as you can see, we have a nice P next to us there on top of the two Bundesliga table, and that's because some teams have dropped points early on the following match week. Both Bochum and Augsburg have lost games, so it does mean now that those two teams can't catch us, and we are now promoted up to the Bundesliga for next season. Still, though, we could get caught by Fortuna Düsseldorf, so hopefully we can steal the title in the next game that we do play on camera. I think that's what we're going to do in that second game of today's episode, because really, it should be academic with a 13-point gap and only five games left for Fortuna Düsseldorf in the season, and six games for us winning this next one will be enough to secure the title. But because of that, we have got transfer budgets for next season. It's not probably ideal because we haven't actually got our money yet for our finishing position in the two Bundesliga thing as that's not been finalized. So I'm not too sure if we can maybe increase the transfer budget 
later when we do get towards the end of the actual season. But there's the confirmation we are going up to the Bundesliga next season. It's taken six seasons. We are going up in our seventh one. The transfer budget, though, is a bit underwhelming. As I said, that might be impacted by the fact we haven't got any prize money for this season yet, but only 1.37 million pounds to work with for our first transfer window heading in to the top tier of German football might be another one where we look to make the most of free transfers, albeit the wage budget does get a significant increase going up to £235,000 a week. As you can see, that now adds a lot to our current wage budget, but still, that transfer budget is a little bit stingy. Hopefully, might be able to ask some questions towards the end of the season to get that bumped up once we do get our prize money. But we are officially up to the Bundesliga for next season. We'll come back shortly and hopefully secure the two Bundesliga title in one of our next couple of games. And as you can see, we come back to show you guys highlights from a game, which obviously means things did not go to plan in the first one that we played away from home against Heidenheim. Maybe a bit too much celebration off the back of getting promoted up to the Bundesliga. This was a first chance for us with a win to make sure we did wrap up the two Bundesliga. Unfortunately, got off to a bad start in this game. Schalke there hit the ball inside the box. Thankfully, Gal won it back, but Coachella just hoofs that into a teammate, and Schalke can put that one home. Kind of felt like things weren't going to go in our favour in this game off the back of that. And then Chaiwa gets robbed of the ball in the second half, and bam, bangs that one through the hands of Ivasic. And it does mean we only suffer our second defeat of the season, 2-0 away at Heidenheim. Didn't actually play that badly in terms of stats, but we did suffer a 2-0 defeat. But we still only needed a draw against Fortuna Dusseldorf in our next game to secure the league title, this one at home as well. So I was pretty confident, but unfortunately, another quite fluky goal early in this one through Bianchi did mean we went 1-0 down early. It was still 1-0 going into the second half, but then they scored very early in that half through Mbuku. And we do suffer back-to-back -back league defeats for the first time this season. Only our third this season. Gar Tungnia makes his way through our defence somehow. Beats Ivizic at his near post. We don't score in this game. That's now two games we have not scored in. Again, stat-wise, not that bad. But with their shots on target, they were a lot more efficient. We're Fortuna Dusseldorf. So unfortunately, two good chances there for us to secure the title against teams not that far behind us on the league table. And it does mean... We're still in a very strong position. 10 points clear of Fortuna Dusseldorf with only four games left in the season. But surely next up is the chance for us to seal this with a win as we take on a team a lot further down the table. In Holstein Kiel, these guys are down in 12th and come into this one in some mixed form, including recent losses against Arminia Bellefeld as well as Magdeburg. So we need from this one a win. I don't think a draw will be enough unless Fortuna Dusseldorf do stuff things up when they take on Karlsruhe. Of course, we bet in that first game of today's episode. But if we can win this one, we will secure the two Bundesliga title. Hopefully things go to plan and also not as many injury concerns for this game as well. A much stronger lineup that we can put out, especially in terms of our bench. But this does look like the ideal opportunity to wrap up the title off the back of those prior two losses. Otherwise, we could be on for a massive bottle job. But we'll come back shortly and hopefully get the job done away at Holstein Kiel. And here are the team sheets for hopefully the title clinching game, even though it is away from home at Holstein Kiel. There they are also playing a 4-2-3-1 just like Carl's Rui did. In terms of us, same starting 11 as that previous game, but our bench is a bit stronger, especially with Osman Tilgen back from that broken collarbone. We also do have Yuri Bass back, but we are going to prefer Blainberg in his place being a bit more match fit. But hopefully we can pick up a win and lift the trophy come the end of this one. And just shot the 10-minute mark, the first highlight in this game does start with it was a gym possession of the ball, looking to hopefully roll this one out. 2-1 off our defenders, actually takes that one long, looking for Salue, can't quite get in behind, but thankfully, we eventually get the ball back there through Tom Gale and Colley, still there at centre-back over Lucas Search. We play that one for two Krasnicki, tries to play a searching ball over the top there for Salue, but unfortunately, the Holstein kill defence do read that one nicely. The goalkeeper pumps that one deep after getting it headed back to him, but we win it in the end. Now Krasnicki goes back yet again to Omar Colley. He's been pretty decent since he has come back from that red card, which we kind of set him out for off the back of that 
in the league, even though that red card did only apply to the cup competition, something we need to think about for next season. Now, Coachella goes far post there. Fourth Krasnicki gets a header off, but unfortunately, that one loops over the top left corner. Encouraging start again, but still nil all. And in fact, there's another highlight starting off the back of that a front in our favour down that left-hand side. Triple B plays that one back to Gale Bullock. Just does enough there to keep position. Now, Coachella plays one forward bit too deep though and Dorenzo can't pick it up albeit Holstein Kiel under pressure here playing out from the back and poor pass there Bullock can win that one for us goes through to Daniel Cueto will pick up his 15th goal of the season well our attacking midfielder will praise off the back of that it's our first goal in a little while as you could tell by those two results that we have just had games I did play through in this session and thought we might get the job done hopefully Wheels haven't fallen off, and that's an encouraging sign. We take a 1-0 lead at the 15-minute mark. And only a few minutes off the back of taking that 1-0 lead. Now it's a free kick in our favour, albeit it is inside our own half. We find Campanelli there. He plays it for two crowds. Nicky back there for our right back, who's been very good since he did come to the club early this season, albeit that's a poor pass, and Holstein Kiel will get a chance here on the counter-attack. Dardai squares that one for Fetty Arp. Hopefully he was offside. Might have just been in front of his teammate there. Otherwise, that's really poor from our right back this time. And in fact, the goal does stand. That was a very quick VAR check. We've been doing a few defensive mistakes in these last couple of games. And that's another one. They nearly trip over each other there. Do the attacking players, but Arp tucks that one away. And it is one all at the 20 minute mark. And only a few minutes off the back of that equaliser. Now we are down the other end for a throw in our favour. Hopefully, we can take the lead nice and shortly off the back of going back to one all. It's a good chance there for Queto from that ball. Unfortunately though, his header just goes wide and we are still locked up at one all. And just past the half hour mark, we get the next highlight in this game. It's a free kick here to Holstein Kiel. They go far post and Mendel gets his heel on the end of that one. Thankfully, it comes off the post and Fiti Arp is forced to play that one back to his defender. The highlight ends, but a good chance there for Holstein to take the lead. Still one all with about five minutes left in the first half. And very short left back of trying to wrap up that previous highlight. Now it's a free kick here to Holstein Kiel, albeit we win it nice and deep and look to try and launch a counter attack, albeit Campanelli can't quite link up there with Krasnicki, albeit thankfully Holstein Kiel pump that one deep and Omar Kali can tidy things up on a yellow card search will probably come on for him at half time. Thankfully Campanelli just gets that ball look like a loose pass and again that's another one there and now Holstein Kiel pump it deep but thankfully that time Tom Gal wins it in the air now we get it forward to Salue Dorenzo cutting him from that left hand side nice ball forward there for Salue but unfortunately can't quite get a shot off it goes into the hands of the Holstein Kiel goalkeeper now down the other end it's a throw in in their favour it finds its way to Alas all the way back to Becker loops one over the top here for their striker who's picked up a little bit of an injury, thankfully that one just a bit too much of it and it comes off of the crossbar. Quite an even first half, but unfortunately at the moment not quite doing enough to wrap up the title in this game. Yet again, it is one all at half time off the back of that poor giveaway off the back of taking a 1-0 lead through Daniel Cueto. As I said, Lucas Search will come on at half time for the yellow carded Omar Colley. And also we might bring on a Tilgan for Triple B is recommended for 45 minutes. That's probably not a bad idea going into the second half. And hopefully that will help us grab a goal to put us in front. As at the moment, not quite doing enough. Locked up at one all. And about 10 minutes into the second half, the first highlight here is a thrown in favour of Holstein Kill. They play that one over the top. Thankfully, Lucas Search off the bench is able to clear that one, albeit that one doesn't quite find Salou out front. And now they try and float that one in for Fiti up. Thankfully, I think that would have been Search again who clears that one now a chance for us here to build from the back and hopefully get a goal which will put us in the lead and hopefully might be one that seals the two Bundesliga title, albeit can't quite find a Tilgen there. Might still be a little bit rusty coming back from that injury, his first bit of game time off of the bench since that has been the case. But good work there though from Cueto to win that ball back nice and high. Now a Tilgen has it inside the box, unleashes a shot from a tight angle actually, forces quite a good save there. Out of the opposition goalkeeper, hopefully he can put in a nice ball from the subsequent corner and we can take that much needed 2-1 lead. Tom Gale does find his head, but unfortunately straight into the path of the goalkeeper. Still one all at the hour mark. And while we're here, Dorenzo's also picked up a yellow card. Brainberg will come on for him. 
the half hour left to hopefully find a goal to claim that two Bundesliga title. And just about to make our ones the last 20 minutes of this one, yet again it's a free kick here in our favour, Krasnicki there, a bit of a loose touch and then a poor pass and now Holstein Kiel might get a chance here on the counter attack, thankfully we just do enough to make sure they go on the back foot and good interception there from Krasnicki makes up for the prior effort, so Louis there with a good chance but can't quite beat their goalkeeper at that near post, and unfortunately we just can't quite Find that winning goal with still 20 minutes left in this one. And Tilgan goes far post again, but this time can't quite pick out Tom Gale. One all with 20 minutes left. And shortly off the back of that previous highlight, we're going to make our last couple of substitutions. Racine Bullock down to a red heart will solidify things there. Bring on Miguel Chaiwa and also so the way on a 6.4 today. We'll see if Thibaut Clerget can do something off of the bench and grab us a goal to lift that two Bundesliga title. And just making our way into the last 10 minutes of this game, I think it's time for us to go attacking here. I don't think a draw does us many favours with the situation that we are in. And a poor pass there at the back, and it might be a chance here for Holstein Kiel to actually grab a winner on the counter-attack. Dardell plays that one in for Abiyama. Thankfully, he went wide, although Ivozic still makes a save, and there's a bit of a dodgy effort there in the box, but thankfully, it's not blown up as a foul. That one, probably quite fortunate. We start to make our way now into four minutes of injury time now, I think it is definitely time for us here to really go for this re-attacking. We'll put a few more players now on attacking duties and see if that helps us out in the last couple of minutes of this game. We'll also just check out some opposition instructions and make sure that those are all good and adjusted with all the substitutions that have been made. And now that that is sorted out, we'll get into the final four minutes of this game and hopefully pinch a late goal to give us all three points. But unfortunately, Yet again, we don't quite get the job done. That's now three games we needed to win and haven't got the job done, at least thankfully though this time, we still pick up something from the game in a point. Should have been the winning goal there through Daniel Cueto, but then poor pass from Campanelli did mean that Holstein Kiel had a chance to grab an equaliser and they took it, but that does still put us potentially on the verge of lifting the two Bundesliga title if Fortuna Dusseldorf do slip up, albeit it is at home against Karl Rui, who we did beat in that first game of today's episode, but still haven't quite wrapped things up. Only 11 points clear with four games left in Fortuna Dusseldorf's season off the back of a one-all draw away at Holstein Kiel. So we couldn't quite get the job done in that second game of today's episode, but thankfully Karl Rui have given us a helping hand with three games left in the season. We do eventually... Lift the two Bundesliga title, it did feel kind of academic with that big lead that we did have off the back of the winter break and building on that off the back of that as well. But thankfully, Fortuna Dusseldorf finally slipped up and we will secure the title on 72 points with three games in hand, 11 points behind us. That will be enough a 2-0 win there from Kalsuri. Does mean we will be the champions going up to the Bundesliga. There is the confirmation there. We do win the title and thankfully, that is all she wrote because otherwise it was going to get a little bit nervy with our form going into those last couple of games of the season. But thankfully, eventually, off the back of those losses to Heidenheim and Fortuna Dusseldorf, we do not just win the two Bundesliga title, but more importantly, also get promoted up to the Bundesliga for next season. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so, or you are enjoying the series here, on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back tomorrow we won't quite get into transfers yet we'll come back i think we'll play the last game of the season and also keep an eye out on the teams who will come up to the bundesliga alongside us it should really be fortuna dusseldorf but it also could be bocken but you'd like to think it will be fortuna dusseldorf automatically and then still a bit of a fight between the likes of bocken augsburg and 1860 munich for that last spot, and of course, that is the team we take on on the final match day. So that game could have a little bit riding on it. We'll see how we get on and hopefully can end the season with a win at home against those guys. But mainly we'll come back tomorrow and just see who is going up with us, who is coming down to replace us from the Bundesliga. And also hopefully we can talk the board into giving us a bit more money for that transfer budget off the back of getting that prize money once the season does wrap up. Also, we'll get stuck in to the end of season review as well. So until that, in tomorrow's episode, bit of a celebration one off the back of securing that two Bundesliga title. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.
Tell her.